What is up, investors, and welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show. I'm your host, Everything Crypto, here to bring you the latest and most important news moving the crypto markets. Now, as always, please remember that nothing on this channel is financial advice. This is all for viewer education and entertainment purposes only. So please invest responsibly, and I love and appreciate you all. And we got some huge news to get through today, including more exchanges actually halting all withdrawals and holding their users' funds hostage. We got to talk about BlockFi being acquired by FTX as well as the Kronos chain gravity bridge upgrade which in my opinion is going to be huge for the chain and for bringing more TVL over to the Kronos chain. Now taking a look at Bitcoin here, we are looking incredibly weak at the moment, sitting at 19.2k, still well below that all-time high. Well, not well below that all-time high of 20,000, but about 5% below that all-time high. And it does appear like we are about to actually officially close the first weekly candle before uh, below 20k. And in my opinion, that is going to be when we do see some more fear enter the market, as that will be the first ever official weekly close where Bitcoin does close below a previous cycle all-time high so we are effectively in uncharted territory same with ethereum here which broke below 1400 uh, almost a month ago at this point and just does not look like it is going to try and retest that level whatsoever we have not even come close to retesting 1400 since we broke below it and it actually looks more likely that we are going to go down to 835 before we think about retesting that level and once again that is a result of the ETH to bitcoin valuation we talk about it in almost every video as it has been incredibly weak over the past couple of months and it basically means that ETH is going to bleed against Bitcoin and also are going to bleed against ETH and that is why in a bear market you do want to be careful um, because Bitcoin does tend to outperform and I think it, this will happen for a while so now moving on here we can see that banks are closed for the weekend but Bitcoin never closes just a friendly reminder and uh, that is why we continue to buy regardless of the price action we just buy more if it goes lower because long term my conviction on these projects has not swayed um, but things are just really ugly right now and we are officially in day two of a recession in my opinion as we have just entered the second half of the year and there is absolutely no way that after the first quarter of negative gdp growth that the second quarter had positive gdp growth and two negative quarters equals technical recession so i do think that will be announced at the end of july the macro is looking real ugly right now but regardless we continue to load now speaking of other announcements here on a july 1st Voyager basically made an announcement that they were effective immediately halting trading, deposits, withdrawals, and loyalty rewards. Their debit card is no longer working, and that is due to some of their exposure with Three Arrows Capital. I know that they did actually uh, send Three Arrows Capital a default notice for the loan that they had to repay, and I believe it was to the tune of like a couple hundred million dollars that Voyager was exposed. And for a company like this that really does not have billions of dollars, that is a big loss loss for them and now they have halted all withdrawal so once again another platform holding its users funds hostage this is just getting absolutely wild in my opinion i don't know how much worse it can get but it really started with the whole terra luna thing and this ripple effect that has hit celsius three arrows capital now voyager block five is just absolutely insane in my opinion and uh, speaking of block five so we talked about how CNBC actually released an article that was not uh, verified. They said that BlockFi was being acquired for 25 mil, and that was not correct. But what we did say in the video is it sounded to me like BlockFi was still going to be acquired by FTX. It was just not going to be for that $25 million price tag. And Zach Prince, the CEO of BlockFi, effectively did take to Twitter and confirm that you that uh, FTX is doing a 400 mil revolving credit facility subordinate to all client funds and an option to acquire BlockFi at a variable price of up to 240 mil based on performance triggers. So this together with potential consideration represents a total value of up to 680 mil. Basically, FTX is essentially going to end up scooping up BlockFi. And this is just, I mean, Sam Bankman Freed has been making a ton of moves in the crypto market. Something I'm definitely actually going to keep an eye on is FTT token, which is the FTX native token, because I just see Sam actually setting up this platform to do very big things in the next bull run. So we have had a lot of centralized exchanges drop like Celsius, like Voyager, uh, like Nexo cutting their interest rates. And this does fare 
fare very well for crypto.com but it does appear that we do have some new competition now and i am keeping my eye on mr sam bankman fried over here as he is making a ton of moves now we also have an article here about tether and how whales rush to redeem 16 billion in usdt following the collapse of Terra's algorithmic stablecoin rivaling history's largest bank runs and you can see here that this is actually a chart of the total stablecoin and market values and at a point here usdt had actually topped 16 bill and then here you could see that after we saw the whole terra luna situation we saw a wicked wicked downturn and we brought it probably lost about three bill in value really not that long shrinking its supply by over 20 percent and all of this to say is that despite all of the fud that is in the market surrounding usdt usdt held its peg that whole time maybe it did depeg for like a couple of days or something like that by half a cent but even the usdt ceo confirmed that you could still redeem each tether that you own for a dollar and that is the point is that despite all the fud usdt does remain strong and pegged which we love to see now el salvador here bought the dip he bought 80 bitcoin at 19,000 each and uh, he essentially thanked everyone for selling it cheap and you can see here a list of all the buys you got one bitcoin five bitcoin and these were all triggered at that nineteen thousand dollar level so el salvador buying the dip i love to see it and here is a little article and this guy does a monthly newsletter travis king and if we just take a look at the june highlights i think it puts in a perspective how insane this month has been so just to go down the list a little bit and recap because i feel like the news has been so non-stop this month it's almost been hard to digest so you can see here three euros capital blows up made off style likely committed crimes knock on effects severely damage many large crypto companies billions lost celsius halts withdrawals on june 13th blockfi loses hundreds of millions on battle loans to three euros capital voyager digital nearly implodes on 3ac contagion receives emergency 500 mil dollar loan and this was actually before they had just announced that they are also now halting their withdrawals sec rejects the grayscale etf solana announced plans for a smartphone after almost taking control of a whale's wallet microstrategy buys 10 mil in bitcoin and the list just goes on and on so no wonder we've just been absolutely landsliding this month as it has basically been bad news after bad news and uh, i don't think we have reached true capitulation yet i think we have much lower to go before true capitulation but we are getting there and uh, if you are still holding all your crypto after this month you are an absolute warrior an absolute champion for making it through all of this fud but um just you know just a forewarning i do think it will get uglier before it gets better and we are still seeing the ripple effect as a result of the terra luna blow up uh we've really just begun to see its effects in my opinion now moving on here to rumors that kucoin could also be halting withdrawals in the near future as they apparently suffered immensely from the luna collapse so if you do have funds on kucoin consider withdrawing them honestly guys consider withdrawing your funds from all centralized exchanges there are pretty much three at this point that i trust number one being binance number two being crypto.com of course our number one and then number three being ftx and besides that i do not trust that any of these exchanges actually have the liquidity con to continue honoring deposits and withdrawals and i really think that after what has happened i just want everyone to be safe guys please pick up a cold storage wallet i have no referral link there is no incentive in this for me to get you a cold storage wallet. It is for your own safety and for your own protection because I always tell you guys I want this community to be safe. Please, please take these words seriously. You need to get a cold storage wallet, not your keys, not your crypto. You've heard it before and you'll hear it again because it rings true to this day. Now, I also just wanted to go ahead and mention quickly that we are going to be having our second Q&A live stream on July 10th. That is next Sunday. So go ahead and drop your question in the comments down below and I will answer or in the q a stream we did have a great uh, turnout for the first one it was good to see all you guys and also please hit that sub and like button if you have not already it costs you guys nothing and it does mean a whole lot to me now moving on here to some more news we can see that the ethereum network successfully hard forked to gray glacier which is probably the last hard fork before the merge meaning that we are getting very very close sometime by the end of this year i do believe that we will see the upgrade to eth 2.0 and that is basically 
going to be the first step and make Ethereum a deflationary asset, just like Bitcoin. There will be Ethereum burned every year, which is going to be absolutely insane for the supply and demand. And then we have to get into sharding, which is actually going to help with the scalability of the platform. So still a long way to go, but Ethereum is getting there. ETH 2.0 is on its way. Now, here is the big piece of news that we got from Kronos, and that is the launch of the Kronos Gravity Bridge Testnet Pioneer 11 today. And this is a stepping stone towards a new paradigm of interoperability for the Kronos chain. Now, if you guys have actually been with the channel for a while, we've been talking about this Gravity Bridge since the beginning of the year. Since the 2022 roadmap came out, the one thing I have said I have been waiting for for months and months is the Gravity Bridge. We have discussed it a couple times on the channel, and we are finally getting the test net, okay? So after months of preparation, it is launching. It is already launched on the 28th of June. And the Kronos Gravity Bridge is poised to be positioned as the canonical, what? Decentralized bridge between Kronos and the ETH mainnet. So the Gravity Bridge is derived from an open source project of the Cosmos community, the Peggy JV Gravity Bridge, which aims to bridge any Cosmos chain with the Ethereum network. The Gravity Bridge technology allows the transfer of ERC-20 crypto tokens from and to Ethereum through a mint slash lock mechanism. So basically what this means is that when a user would send assets from ETH to Kronos, the corresponding ERC-20 token is locked in a smart contract on the Ethereum side and then minted on the Kronos side in the form of a CRC-20 token. Now, likewise, when you send an asset from Kronos to Ethereum, the corresponding CRC-20 token is burned on the Kronos side and the ERC-20 token is released on the East side. And this gravity bridge involves a Solidity smart contract on the Ethereum testnet, a set of orchestrators and real layers which are in charge of synchronizing the state of ETH and Kronos test nets and the role of the relayer is to send signed updates to the gravity bridge contract on Ethereum earning fees from the transaction batch so the gravity bridge does also support the health of the ecosystem and award people who are relaying the information and yeah honestly the gravity bridge is something I am absolutely pumped for as basically this is just going to unlock a lot more total value locked potential for the Kronos chain so once again the gravity bridge the concept of it is quite simple but it is absolutely genius in my opinion when you send an asset from ETH to Kronos the ERC20 token is going to lock itself in a smart contract and they are going to mint you the same token as a CRC20 token and then when you actually go ahead and send this uh, token back from the Kronos chain to the ETH chain the corresponding CRC20 token is going to be burned and they are going to re-release that ERC20 token that was locked in the smart contract so honestly i'm really looking forward to this upgrade this is a huge step towards the interoperability of chronos and i do think that any uh DeFi chain that is opening themselves up to interoperability with ethereum is just opening themselves up to way more users to way more tvl on the platform and that is definitely what we want to see out of chronos so a very very big move from the chronos chain something that i think is being slept on no one's really i haven't really heard too many people talking about it and that was really why i wanted to hop on here and talk about this today because this is definitely something that i will be keeping my eye on moving forward so on that note i hope you guys did enjoy this saturday market update i'm wishing you all a peaceful and restful long weekend and as always i will be back tomorrow with the chronos weekly market update so i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out for now